Hello, my name's James Musselwhite, a portrait photographer here in the UK and pointer and shooter behind the project, a portrait of a wrestler. And I welcome you to this, our seventh video in the series. We'll be taking you back to 2014 today to discuss our shoot with Curtis Chapman. Now, we first saw Curtis at a Revolution Pro Wrestling show in 2014 where I met uh, Andy Simmons and a few of the other guys there to sort of introduce myself and say that I was a photographer looking for wrestlers to shoot. Uh, Curtis was in the main event and here's the first picture we took of him ever, uh, which is from the seats. I took the camera along with me with a long lens. Here he is being hoisted up by the fearless flatliner, ready to be propelled onto uh, Rishi Ghosh and Lord Gideon Grey there you see at ringside. Uh, he was billed at the time in the show as the UK's youngest wrestler and I believed that. I thought, wow, here's an opportunity. I'm actually going to shoot the youngest professional uh, wrestler in the UK. So we got in contact with Andy and said, look, we'd like to invite any trainees to come along and Curtis was one of the first ones to actually jump at the chance to come and see us. So here he is in his wrestling singlet, boots, knee pads and amateur headgear, I suppose, uh, at the top of his head there to sort of sign it all off. Um, I, like, there's nothing of him like he's a complete string bean at this point and like the story's kind of told with him really there i think i remember saying to him in the shoot i, I, I want to make you look like brock lesnar and um, and that's what we were going for so what we're going to do today is we're just going to have a look at some of the images that we took in that shoot discuss some of the lighting styles and see uh, where we got to with curtis um, immediately a good way to sort of toughen people up I suppose is to is to go darker with the images uh, i wanted to make the most of this amateur head headgear that he's wearing uh we've showcased the sort of the marines tag at the top because i assume it's like a an old army sort of wrestling piece i suppose uh take a nice higher angle and again have him emerging from the darkness um hair deliberately covering one eye there i wanted to add a sort of like an element of mystery i suppose into the shot uh and and two panoramic soft boxes evenly spaced either side quite close to the subject to give us a nice soft even lighting across the whole piece Again, not sure this is as strong as the previous picture. Um, maybe sort of less is more with, with this sort of style of shoot. So we'll see where we go with it next. Really simple lighting setup. And it's one. It's probably the first time I've, I've done this lighting setup um, in the project. And, and it's one that I've replicated quite a number of times before. Most recently with uh, Suzuki um, over in Japan. Um, just to make the most of his sort of detailed haircut that he's got behind him. I'll showcase that image another time maybe. Uh, but this one, just having the rest of the sort of deep in thought, um, clouding him into darkness, less is more with Curtis throughout this shoot, I think we'll find. And then the same lighting setup we've just turned his, his head into camera. So we've gone from essentially what was a butterfly lighting setup just taken from a 90 degree angle. Now he's turned his head to us. We've actually got a more sort of Rembrandt loop style lighting there uh, with the head still sort of forcibly darkening into shadow. Um, I've over processed this one for my taste a little bit. It's interesting to go back and have a look at these images. But I think you know, this is obviously four years ago and we're experimenting still at the experimental stage, still trying different things. Um, and I think maybe just a bit too much over processing on that one for my tastes at this point in the shoot i'm trying to get we've we've done the stoic ones we've done the posed ones we've done the sort of like the moody ones now i want to sort of get a bit more out of curtis so i'm literally getting him to shout at me which um scared my scared my wife i suppose she wondered what was going on upstairs in our studio here uh same sort of pry into camera this time but i've added in a little bit of smoke given it a vintage filter and then added, added a second exposure there which is layered over the top to sort of uh, emphasize the movement and mood in the picture. Um, we're still playing around with this with the dry ice machine here and for me maybe it's a bit too much too much coverage on this one and there'll, there'll be shots later on in the project with other wrestlers that I think we've perfected it on but I don't think this is quite the right one here. But then we came to this one and, and it's quite a symmetrical shot. Um, the lighting is very harsh on the left hand side but I didn't mind that too much. It really picked out all of the detail um, in, in the shot close up here. You start to see the little veins just sort of popping through his neck and having him not look at the camera and just having him this big scream up into the air with these hands clasping forward it's just a it's just a real sort of caught in the moment expression you know um and one that really tells a story and and that whole thing that i said to him at the start of the session i said i don't care what size you are by the end of this session you're going to look like brock lesnar we we had to do this scream a few times to really get him into it but by the end because he's into it because it's not faked because he's actually letting out a roar we've actually got these this legitimacy to it i suppose 
Um, and this was the one that was to make it into the project. Um, so this is the one that we selected to go through to our final 20. So um, it's number two in our list here. So we're going to pop it in there next to Doug. So when we went to the Revolution Pro Wrestling training school the other week to shoot the trainees, he was right at the center of everything. You know, he's, he's part of that machine down there. And the latest shot that we took of him was this. Um, he's their cruiserweight champion. I know from speaking and listening to Andy Quilden, the promoter down there at Rev Pro, how proud he is of Curtis's development. Um, it's night and day, this shot, from what we were taking previously. I didn't have to goad him into doing anything. He, he held himself really, really well. And he is, you know, the, the poster boy for hard work and dedication. The, 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 you know, the, in the words of Vince McMahon, you know, that he often quotes, the little engine that could. Um, there's no limits to what you can achieve in this industry, provided that you put in the hard work and you're utterly dedicated. And we're really, really proud for, for what Curtis has done and what he's going to continue to do in the future. Uh, next week we'll be going back again to 2014 to one of the early shoots and it's a special one next week because we're going to be looking back at our very first shoot with the villain Marty Skull. So click the subscribe button, click the like button, add any comments or questions you want to underneath this video, share it with your friends and as ever all the very best.